Every time I take the PNF out, it always rains. But have no fear, because I'm here. <laughs> yeah, and today we are going to look at the Camlan 50mm 1.1. You guys remember Zoha and thank you for coming back for demonstration. Thank you for having me again and, and again. And <laughs> well, for what this lens is capable of. And to be quite honest, I have no idea what this lens is or what it is or what the brand is. Uh, I picked it up from Kickstarter. You know the crowdfunding thing? Oh. Yeah. I thought you were going to say I picked it up on eBay. I was like... Okay. Well, they do sell it on eBay. Uh, but it was launched via Kickstarter and that's what I saw. Okay. And what caught my eyes was the price. So not, not so much about the lens. I mean, I've seen like, plenty of fast lenses. You remember we did the Seven Artisan? Yes. Yes. And then um, so th this this is almost similar to that particular lens. However, it was really the price that drove me into it. It was a hundred pound. That's really good. And you know, like I, I I could not believe my eyes when I saw one zero zero. You know, I was like, what for fifty millimeters one point one? You know, come on, that's joking, right? Did they right? forget one zero? Well, no, I wouldn't go as far as that, but then, <laughs> but then it's cheap, you know, like, uh, so I, I just forget it, you know, I, I just place my hundred pound there, you know, just, I just want to see what this lens is about, you know, like how can they produce such a cheap lens and still work? <laughs> and uh, so it finally arrived, so I took it out, you know, used Zohar as a beautiful model, and then I would test this lens out and see how these things compare like to all the other fast 50mm lenses, especially when this guy's actually native to Micro Four Third because you can order this lens with obviously different mounts, like mm. you can mount it on Canon or Nikon, but they do have a Micro Four Third mount, so which works natively on this thing, which means that the Infinity also works perfectly as well. So this is what that kind of interests me the most because that's you know we are Michael Four Third guys now and uh, yeah this is good yeah let's have some fun with it have some fun not no no Let's um, talk a little bit about the build of this lens, shall we? You know, like, uh, remember we talked about the 7 Artisan, design, you know, yeah. you, actually, you were actually quite impressed with the build quality. It was quite heavy, it was metal. Yeah. And then that was what I was worried about, you know, for a hundred pound lens, you know, like, it has to be crap. Mm, yeah, basically a piece of plastic. Yeah, but I have a few, again. Oh. Heavy. Yeah. It's fully metal. It's fully metal, and seriously, I don't know where they source the metal. And they managed to build this entire thing for 100 quid, and that that is the price you pay. And they still managed to make That's profit. That's a retail price, yeah. And I'm like, well, not retail price, but that was the launch price on the yeah. Kickstarter. But even that, you can find them on eBay for relatively cheap. And but once again, you know, they didn't they didn't send this to me for review. I actually purchased it through Kickstarter. And like I mentioned before, I do support Kickstarter style, so. Uh, I always look for some kind of innovative mm. or interesting thing. That's that's. I think the price what interests me the most. I so, was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you yeah, don't. Yeah, you're yeah. just looking at the price, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, but for this particular one, yes. But the build quality, I, I was quite shocked. You know, in terms of how good it is. Uh, it's very well damped. The focusing ring is very, very kind of like a like as well, if I can say that. You know, and it's kind of shocking. It's very the, smooth. The uh, focusing ring, however, is clickless. So like, if you turn it, there's no click, and then uh, yeah. which is a bit, um, I would say, video friendly. And because uh, a lot of videographer, they don't like to hear the clicking, click, click. yeah, and, the and and also because it's kind of it had the definitive setting, hmm. so you always got these little vibrations there when you click it, so it doesn't always look nice in the uh, in the video. But when you have a very completely smooth um, aperture, it makes the video making a lot smoother. For photography, it doesn't really matter. But I think yeah, because it's still. 
For photographer, um, most photographers, if they have an aperture ring like this, they would like to have a clicky. So that they know. They know exactly what yeah. setting they are. You know, it's all by memory. Like they know all the way to the right is 1.1, then you start clicking one is 1.4, then yeah. all the way on. So but if they, you don't have that marker, you'll then you have lost. to you have to look every single time. Yeah. So that's the downside. But having said that, it is very smooth and everything just smooth, which is kind of, yeah, shock, shockingly good. Yeah, I didn't know the price until you said it earlier and... Camlen, how did you make this freaking lens? How did you do it? <laughs> Tell me the secret. <laughs> So now, of course, you know, it comes to the very important part, image quality. You know, this is always when a cheap lens fails. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we experienced it many times before. And then, uh, obviously, I, was, well, I wasn't ex uh, impressed. But this, actually, surprisingly... Jimmy's a little fangirl, because he saw the images and he was like... Ooh. Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, let, let's say that if it's... That was the exact <laughs> sound he made. Ooh. I, I, I was actually making it, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I was actually quite impressed. I know. Not of the sharpness it produces because it's not sharp when you're shooting 1.1. It's a little bit soft, you mm -hmm. saw that. And then, uh, but it does give you that very old vintage organic look that mm -hmm. kind of suitable for black and white photography, especially because um, uh, it does work. It makes it look very genuine. Genuine, yeah, that's the word you see. Like, she, she, she said that, you know. She, she's been photographed, like, I know million times you know and then uh yeah she can tell what is a good photo or not so but <laughs> but anyway so it, it was quite nice i think 1.1 is very very vintage very kind of mm. like old school look uh if you like the modern kind of sharpness of thing you have to stop it down to like 1.8 or 2.8 even to get that really ultra punchy bitingly sharp look yeah but even the soft things are not too soft they're not blurry yeah. There's, they still have it's a big some glow. It's got a little bit of glow in them. Exactly, yeah, yeah. so it's not like losing any definition in it. Yeah, which no. is good. So the, the, the lens itself, I, I think, if, depending on what sort of niche you want, if you want it to be very vintage, you can just mm. shoot 1.1. 1 .1, and if you want just a little bit more modern, you can shoot a 2 or 2.8. So the choice is yours. And then it's actually quite flexible for, in, for that matter. Uh, I think the image quality is, yeah, I, not bad for... I, was, I would put it into a more vintage category. And then, uh, yeah. you know, obviously, if you buy any modern day lenses now, they're all sharp, you know, like it, but they have that very modern look to it. While this one does give you that old school look, Softness. you know, the very 1920, yeah. 1930. So if you're doing a photo shoot for that thing, this thing could be a very good accessory. Trust me. It's only a hundred pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, you know. it's a good, I mean, you probably can't even rent a lens for that price. So you might as well just really? buy one. Yeah. You, you rent a professional lens, cost you at least three, three, four hundred pounds a day. Photography is expensive. As a photographer, you hold your camera for a long time, and you know you can That's shoot. Right. You can be shooting two, three, four hours, five hours, yeah. even you know a day. And uh, having a well-balanced lens is very critical. Well, this is one thing that this thing is rubbish because it's metal, yeah, very heavy. And if you put it on a slim body like the Pen F, it's gonna cut into you. Yeah, remember, remember, I did the balance test in my previous videos, and uh, look at this, and uh, that's how heavy front heavy it is and what it means if you hold your camera like this you're always mm. feeling like this and then you have to kind of counterbalance it by using a little bit of a force mm. and over a long time you start straining your wrist and you start feeling it so that's not a good thing um, but I guess it's doable you know you just have to work on your wrist strength you just need to do wrist exercises you like get a little elastic band and you do your exercise every day yeah I'm telling you that's how you do it 
Really? Yeah, that's how you build up the muscles. So I should do my camera with this? Yeah. I'm too lazy for Basically, that. Jimmy's saying he's not strong enough for this camera. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. It's okay, I'll help. I, I, don't, I don't have superhuman strength like she does. Okay, Zoha, do you like the lens? I mean, you've seen his images. Obviously, you, you're not a photographer yet, but you like looking at images. So, yeah. what, what do you see? You know, like, do you like the effect or the look of it? I, I was very impressed. Yeah. Because I didn't think it was as cheap as it actually is. And then when I found the price, I liked it even more because I can afford it. So, it's the bang for buck bonus. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I personally, as a photographer, I think it's unique because of the look mm. and for the price <laughs> definitely you know like that price really struck me and then uh Cameron, can you just say that again just like how can you make a lens this cheap oh. and uh but i i'm impressed i i am genuinely impressed with yeah. the image quality um but because it's so cheap uh i have no idea about how long the, it's gonna last how long it's gonna last uh how the warranty issue is gonna work you know i haven't seen like an official kind of sales channel in the uk you know, but do you think it matters? You can just buy another one. I guess for you know that sort of prices, you know, you can yeah. you can easily replace it if it does yeah. break eventually. Uh, but judging by the, the kind of um, external quality, you know, fully metal, it's a manual lens. So don't forget, it's a manual lens. So it's not autofocus. Mm -hmm. um, so that means there's no electronics inside, and that's a good thing in terms of repairability so if it does yeah. breaks you can easily take to your cam local camera store they should be able to fix it because of the manual lens yeah. and uh, so I, I guess I have a suspicion this thing could last if as long as you don't drop it I mean but but once again I have to say impressed I'm impressed one thumbs up or two? Oh. Four. Four. Four thumbs up. Four thumbs and yeah, four good, 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 great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, de definitely just highly recommend it. If you are uh, in the market looking for a, uh, I would say a medium telephoto portrait lens, mm -hmm affordable for portrait lens <laughs> this is definitely has to be on the list for that sort of price um, but don't forget just one last thing to remind you guys this is a 50 millimeters lens so on a micro four third uh, is equivalent to a hundred mil so it's a good portrait focal length. don't get me wrong so it's good but uh, you can see that uh, earlier we know I have to walk further out if I want a folding portrait yeah. I have to go f like quite far out so that's the kind of like a downside thing but the effect does come out quite quite nicely I have to say so yeah. so again Jimmy's just saying he's lazy I'm lazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to walk that far. And then, uh, but anyway, good, good, recommend it. Clap, clap, clap. It, this lens is a black and white lens. So first of all, I would like to say thank you, Zoha, for welcome. coming to our show once again. Be our model. Yes. He bribed me, actually, with chocolate. Chocolate. Uh, life is like a box of chocolate. Life is like a box of chocolate. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to put her social media down in the description. You can follow her, you know, and uh, she's very lovely, very photogenic, you know, just, uh, just a nice Bye. human being. Thank you. Yeah. There's not enough of those. <laughs> no, no. It's quite a rare breed, I think. <laughs> anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe our channel and put on the bell notifications to stay tuned for our new videos so until next time i guess we're gonna say goodbye yeah when are we gonna see you again soon soon whenever you want to see me stay tuned tell, tell them you want to see me again yeah yeah just just leave some comment down below say i love zoha then she's gonna come back see how many we're gonna receive <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> kind of. Yeah. <laughs> He's very ready. He's just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Go, go, go. Uh, what, what I'm saying? Confusion. Sorry. <laughs> Sup. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Slava. Yes. <laughs> wow, thanks. Yes. He just takes me for granted now. He's just like, oh, yeah, she's part of our Sorry, I, I was thinking about pigeons. Ha ha ha!